everybody, this is Max Olson with Adjuster TV here with a new update on Hurricane Dorian. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about the storms that hit in central Oklahoma earlier this week. I filmed a tornado on the north side of town near Edmond, and then the storms came through the city, bringing straight line wind damage all throughout the metro. We had trees down, we had roofs blown off, and power outages. Power flashes lit up the night sky as the storms were going through, and many areas in Oklahoma City lost power. In fact, over 100,000 residents. But let's get to the main story. Hurricane Dorian is now working its way northwest of Puerto Rico, and let's talk about the potential impacts to the U.S later this weekend. All right, guys, so there is a lot to talk about, but I'm going to do my best to keep this relatively condensed, relatively simple, and not get into too many specifics since there still are quite a few lingering questions. What we know right now is that uh, we do have Hurricane Dorian passing just north of Puerto Rico. It was upgraded from Tropical Storm to a hurricane earlier this afternoon and is now a strengthening Category 1 hurricane. We can see this pretty classic uh, shape starting to unfold. It's not perfect yet, but it's definitely the most impressive it has looked thus far. Let's go ahead and come down here to the radar out of Puerto Rico and we can see that classic shape unfolding with a nicely formed eye here, an eye wall almost wrapped completely around and nice feeder bands all around the storm. Puerto Rico was lucky, they just narrowly missed a landfall from this as it was strengthening and that's the last thing they need. So it missed it just to the west off in the islands over here and it is now moving steadily to the north northwest. Now, one thing to note is that this thing is strengthened faster than some of the models have predicted, which is concerning because that means it's going to be a more healthy storm going into the one portion of the forecast that is a little bit um, uncertain for its health. Uh, also, one thing I want to mention briefly, just for those of you who aren't familiar with hurricanes and the way they work, uh, or at least the way uh, that the most damaging wind portion of the storm works. Uh, so this is the eye, everybody knows that. It's a relatively calm portion of the storm and immediately surrounding that is the eye wall. Uh, now this is an area where the pressure becomes lowest and the storms are the strongest and the winds are the strongest. This little area around the eye directly surrounding that perimeter. Um, when you get out here, there's still wind, there's still rain, and you can get some gusts, but the main bulk of the damage, if this thing were to make landfall somewhere, for instance, uh, that comes around this eye wall. So I just want people to know that this whole entire thing, if it's a category three, that doesn't mean this whole entire storm is producing category three winds. It's just in this small area. Uh, and also, just speaking about the storm, it's small. It's a very compact storm which uh, reminds me of Hurricane Andrew back in the early 90s. Uh, just a little bulldozer, a little saw just coming through. Anyways, uh, this is the most interesting part of the forecast right here. As it moves west, it's going to encounter wind shear. Wind shear tears hurricanes apart. It's the changing of wind direction and speed with height. And that's good if you want tornadoes. Now, good being a relative term, meteorologically speaking, that would make good conditions for tornadoes. Um, tornadoes aren't good, hurricanes aren't good, but we're speaking meteorologically here, so that's why we're using it in that uh, in that you know phase. So, anyways, uh, wind shear is not good for hurricanes. However, uh, this is not going to tear the storm apart. It's going to probably make the storm work a little bit harder to stay strong, but the fact that it is strengthened so much uh, is concerning because the stronger the storm is, the better it can ventilate or fight off that wind shear. So uh, that's concerning because we were expecting a slightly weaker storm that might have been uh, more susceptible to being impacted by that shear. Now it's looking like it might uh, kind of thread the needle through the worst of it and then it's in a very, very primed environment for strengthening. Very warm ocean sea surface temperatures and even below, when we go a little below the surface, uh, we've got really warm waters. So that's a scary situation, but we are still many days out and there's still questions on the actual track. Here we're looking at what's called a spaghetti plot. Uh, these are all sorts of different uh, variations of a computer generated weather model, all shown in one graphic. And this basically gives us a consensus of what the model is thinking uh, 
as far as possibilities. And when we start to see these lines get closer and closer together, we know that the model is locking in on a solution. And then we compare that with other models, and that's how we get a good grasp on what uh, the forecast looks like. And we can see here it remains pretty tight as we get a little further out. It spreads a little bit, but almost all members are making some type of landfall. Uh, this area of high pressure up here will dictate whether it is shoved due west and goes right through the center of the Florida Peninsula or if it goes up here in Georgia or the Carolinas. And I mean, even some models have had a similar situation to Hurricane Matthew in 2016 where the eye wall basically just grazed the coast and never really made landfall until North or South Carolina, I don't remember. But it is becoming more likely that um, it is going to make a direct landfall. National Hurricane Center has this thing making landfall as a major hurricane. We can see the cone of uncertainty here is basically encompassing most of Florida, some into Georgia. And remember, the cone of uncertainty means they're uncertain past a certain point where the exact center of the hurricane is going to go, where that eye wall is going to go that we were talking about. So right now, the general consensus is, you know, through the center of Florida, but that could easily shift towards Jacksonville, down towards Miami. It just depends on this uh, area of high pressure up here and this area of low pressure down here where this thing is threading the needle between. Another thing we should briefly note, uh, if these trends continue, we can see here that some of them have the storm going back into the Gulf, back into very warm waters, and a potential second landfall in uh, Florida or some of the other Gulf states, depending on how far south it goes. And we still can't rule out the possibility of the Carolinas either. We just don't know. It's a little bit too far out to know for sure. But so anyway, let's get down to the final message of this uh, potential major hurricane making landfall somewhere along the southeast coast of the United States. Right now, National Hurricane Center is predicting a category three somewhere near landfall, uh, which would be winds of 115 miles per hour sustained, winds of up to 140 miles per hour. Now, the most primed environment is unfortunately just off the coast. So that would mean that the most likely time for this thing to strengthen potentially beyond that, if all other factors, you know, go in the favor of this thing strengthening, uh, that means that it will be possibly at its strongest right before it makes landfall. And we can't rule out the possibility of a hurricane that might be uh, stronger than a Category 3. But we don't want to get uh, too dead set on anything right now. This thing could get heavily impacted by that shear and it may become weaker it may turn to the north there's still a lot of variables as with weather you should know that by now guys anyways that's all for tonight we're gonna try our best to keep you updated here at adjuster tv i am almost certainly going to be heading down to chase this unless something unforeseen comes up or the forecast changes significantly. So we will be providing live updates here at Adjuster TV and feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions about hurricanes, concerns about the impacts. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Stay safe, everybody, and have a great night.